Welcome to Life According to Scripture, where the Word of God is alive, anointed, and geared toward developing, improving, and strengthening your relationship with the Lord. Our teachings aim to spiritually nurture both new believers and strengthen those who are already mature in their faith. We're grateful to have you join us in the study of the Word of God today. We pray that it penetrates your heart deeply, bringing you even closer to the Lord. Greetings, radio audience, in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, this is Minister Caroline Gothia coming to you live from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Hesperia, California, in the United States. Um, last week, if you were with us around the Word of God, we talked about developing your prayer life, developing a prayer life once you accepted Jesus as your Savior. This week, we're going to be talking about your spiritual growth, spiritual growth. Once you have confessed Jesus as your Savior and, you, and made Him Lord of your life, spiritual growth begins. Your life begins to change. Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision or no purpose, the people perish or they live a life under the curse instead of under the blessing that God provided for them. The reason it's so dangerous to live your life without vision or without purpose is because vision or purpose lets us look beyond the temporary into the eternal. In other words, what we can experience with our five senses, that's temporary. It's soulish. It's subject to change. But when we look beyond what we see, what we feel, what we smell, what we hear, what we taste. When we look beyond that, we look off into spiritual things, into eternal things. We look beyond what we see to Jesus' strength and Jesus' power in our lives. We begin to see healthy instead of sickness and disease. We will begin to see into the eternal that our needs are met in Christ Jesus, that we're not deprived, that we don't have to do without, that we're God's children, that we've been provided for. Receiving Jesus and the Holy Spirit brings enlightenment into our lives that we could never experience on our own, beloved. When we study scripture, Proverbs 29, 18, we begin to get the revelation understanding that God directs our paths. Our paths, Scripture says, are ordered of the Lord. When you don't have a spiritual vision or a purpose or direction, we live our lives in discontentment. We live them in uncertainty, in confusion. we making poor decisions, in depression, suicidal, all of this, when we don't have a purpose, we don't have a vision. Hallelujah. Scripture says, without a vision, without a purpose, my people perish. That means they wander around in the noonday as if it's dark, as if it's midnight, bumping into things in life, making all the wrong choices. Hallelujah. We have to know our purpose that God has for our life and, the, and that he directs our path so that we walk out that purpose. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13 verse 12 gives us revelation re regarding the effects of not having vision or purpose. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, not healthy. But when the desire comes, it's like a tree of life. Quite the opposite of living without vision or without purpose. It's like a, law, a life of lawlessness and no discipline and discouraged and depressed. That describes a purpose with a person with no purpose or vision for their life. This described my life before I met Jesus and made him my Savior and my Lord. 
If you haven't done so yet, beloved, I strongly suggest you do the same because other than that, you are wandering around in this life going from mistake to mistake, from bed to bed, from man to man, from woman to woman, from job to job. You shop, but you're not satisfied. You work several jobs, but the money, it's like you have holes in your pockets. You drink, but you're still thirsty. You eat, but you still want to eat more. These things are coming from inside of you. The, perpen, the person that has no vision, no purpose, this is what this is describing. Jesus' vision provides spiritual direction for our lives. When we get hold of his vision, his purpose, now we're going somewhere. Without it, we stumble around, as I said, at noonday, as if it were midnight. When we develop relationships with the Lord, intimate communion with God, the Father, our lives begin to take on a new meaning. But that takes time, beloved. That means you have to have time alone with the Lord. That means you have to take time out of your day to read his word. That means you have to take time out of your day to, to, to pray and, and to seek his face and see what he wants to say to you for that day. Hallelujah. We begin to walk in joy instead of depression. We begin to walk in victory instead of continual defeat and always pointing the finger at someone else for our failure. We begin to experience financial freedom when we tithe when, and when we sow seed. We begin to give offerings. That's another word for, for sowing of seed, the giving of offerings. And if you're not familiar, when I use the word tithe, that means 10% of your income to your home church. So scriptures, so when we, scripture teaches us when we tithe and we sow seed or give offerings, we begin to walk in the wisdom of God instead of our own pathetic earthly wisdom. We begin to see beyond the immediate circumstances to the long-term ultimate result. We begin to see past the physical and into the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. We begin to realize this is not our sole existence here on earth. There's something more out there that we are not tapping into in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. We, we become people that see beyond ordinary physical sight we, we, to perceive a revelation beyond this natural world. Unless you can look beyond this natural world, you will always live a life of defeat. I'm going to repeat that statement because it's big. Unless you can look beyond this natural world and see with your spiritual eyes or your spiritual understanding into the spirit realm, you will always live a life of defeat and you will spend your life pointing your finger at other people as to why you're not successful, why things don't seem to work out for you. Once the Holy Spirit gave me the revelation that the Bible, the Word of God, this is my Father speaking directly to me. My life began to change the way I've been sharing with you today. And before that, when I read the Bible, if I read it, it was like, it was just words on a page, words in a book. It was not like my father talking to his daughter. But once you accept Jesus as your savior and you make him Lord of your life, you are his son, you are his daughter. And when you read the word of God, when you read the promises of God, this is your father, your covenant father, talking to his covenant children and telling them about his covenant plans that he has for their life. 
Hallelujah. So once the Holy Spirit gave me the revelation that the Bible was the word of God, it's my father speaking directly to me. Yes, my life began to change the way I've been sharing with you today. I began to see and believe that he makes promises and he keeps his promises, that I could believe his promises. He wasn't a man that he should lie. See, a lot of times we equate our experiences with human beings, especially women. Women do this when they've had a bad time with their father, their earthly father, or if they had a bad uh, marriage or, or bad experiences with men, then they tend to equate the father with that male image. And that is a big mistake, ladies. When, you're, when you live a life of people lying to you and you lying to others, you might struggle, as I did, that God is not a man, though. He's not a man. He's not a liar. Hallelujah. But he has to bring you to that place. How does he bring you to that place of thinking that and believing that? He, be, the time that you spend with him. This is why I said earlier, it is so important that you set aside a certain amount of time in, in the day or in the evening that belongs to him. It's directly his. You don't do anything else. This time is between you and your father. If you, you'll begin to start believing this the way that I did. Uh, when I first read, God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. It really didn't mean anything to me. But after you spend time with him and you get to know his personality and you get to know his ways and he gets down into your spirit, beloved, you will begin to change. You will begin to believe. I don't care how many experiences you've had as a woman with, with men that didn't treat you right. Your father, God, has never done anything to mistreat you. Hallelujah. If he said it in his word, if he said it, watch what scripture says. If I said it, will I not bring it to pass? This is God talking to you. He said, if I said it, will I not bring it to pass? Then he says in another passage, I will not alter the words that come out of my mouth. In other words, if the words came out of my mouth, and that's what's happening when you're reading the word of God. Those are his words. He said, if the words came out of my mouth, I will not alter the thing that came out of my mouth. He says, I, I, if I said it, will I not bring it to pass? That was his question to me. So then when I got into the word of God and I began to see the things that he was saying, now it's becoming easier for me when I read this, if I said it, Will I not bring it to pass? Now it doesn't matter what man lied to me. Now it doesn't matter that my father may not have kept his word. Now, none of those things matter now. Now, because I've spent that time with him, and now I realize he's somebody, he's my God, he's my father, and I can trust what he says. He says, if I said it, will I not bring it to pass? You begin to believe the word when it says things like, I'm not a man that I should lie, I'm the Lord. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. When it says in John 10, 10, I came so you could have life and have it more abundantly. You begin to believe that. Now that same passage talks about the Satan and, and, and what he comes to do. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But in that same verse in John 10, 10, then the Lord speaks up and says, yeah, he came to do that. He came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came so that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. This is his word. Hallelujah. That you have life and have it more abundantly. It became easy for me to believe that when I begin to forgive others, because he said, if, if, if you don't forgive others, how am I going to forgive you? Hell, so my, my forgiveness of others was connected to my father forgiving me. Hallelujah. These things start jumping off the page at you. You start getting revelation of it. This helped me from self-torment over decisions that I had made. Because if I had to forgive others, what? I had to forgive myself as well. So when you have vision and purpose, beloved, you begin to develop that intimate relationship with the Lord. Your life begins to change. You begin to experience these monumental things that we've been talking about the past couple of weeks. Hallelujah. But it's not going to happen minus you're spending time with the Lord, 
spending time in the word of God, spending time in prayer, and then lining your life up with the word of God that you're studying in his word. Amen. Now that's all the time we have for today, beloved. You can reach us in the United States at Oasis of Faith Christian Center, 17520 Lemon Street, Hesperia, California, 92345. In the United States, you can also reach us at lifescripture at gmail.com. Now until we come into your home again next week, I pray the blessing of God over your life and over your family. I thank you that you will take this word deep into your spirit and into your heart, that you will study it and meditate on it. And may God give thee increase.